Okay. Let me move. Let me open here. So we go into 101. Okay, so here is the main basic, and this is 101 Wolf. So as you enter here, see that uh, we have here, okay, the dictionaries, okay, all our dictionaries. So it's important to see that you have a dictionary called Clean, Snappy X Mesh Clean. So I want to mention here that you have the original one, okay, and this is the thing that probably is a little bit no, the people get afraid or get lost. So the standard dictionary that you get, you have something like this, which is a lot of comments, a lot of options. So it's probably you get lost. In the one under scare or clean, is exactly the same thing, but just erasing the comments. And see that it's very straightforward. So see that the only thing that you need to, to do, read the geometry. So see here that we're reading the geometry, always is located in constant tree surface. Then use these standard parameters, okay? Here, at the refinement in edges. Image feature is always edges, okay? So you detect these edges using surface features and split the, your background mesh in two. Then at surfaces, you have global and local. This one is that option to create that sphere that is not, no, you don't use very often. This is the curvature refinement, see that you have the angle there. This is the refinement in a region. So see here that you are creating a region that you call box. So you can read an STL or inside a snappy X mesh, you can create a search of a box. You get coordinate minimum and max. So you're going to say that inside that, that box, okay, that you gave a name called box, you call it box. So see that when you go here, refinement regions, box, Okay, and then say you say inside that box you want levels one. Okay, one run. Uh, actually, this is this is all syntax should be level and just one number. Okay, but again, this can be something the minimum and max value. Okay, so inside that one one. Okay, location in mesh, you give a point that is outside the STL but inside your domain, and see that these are default options don't touch this and this is boundary layer you choose the auctions okay these are also you can use it as default auctions and here you choose the surface where you want to add you want three layers and default auctions okay then you have this dictionary okay where you have all you see that it's an include file where you have all the quality parameters so let me show you the clean one so see that use these default parameters later we're going to talk a little bit more about that but see, this is with the comments that probably you can get lost. And that's it. You see that it's very, very straightforward. So don't get lost in the comments. By the way, remember that in your installation, as you go in Etsy, here you have case it's, and you go, if you go in and annotate it, you can find all, all these dictionaries annotated. So here you have the Snappy X Mesh, original one, no, all annotated with all these comments. So. So probably this is a little bit intimidating. People get lost because you have all these comments and everything. But the moment that you erase that, it's not a big deal, okay? Okay, so let's work in this case. So let's see the first step. So let's get an idea what we need to do, okay? So remember, first, you need to create block mesh. You have your domain. And let's open the mesh, okay? What we have. So what we're doing what we're doing is this when you have this background mesh and inside that mesh you put your geometry. And basically this is what we're doing, okay? Now that we have this, using this dimension as a reference. Now you are going to do all the splitting, not during the castellation sta stage of edges, surfaces, and in the volume, okay? So see that is you choose a splitting of, of two, you take this one and you split it twice, and that is how you resolve. So you have in this slides the equation that it, co it is going to give, you know, you can have that reference about the edge size. So let me go back here, this. 
So if you want to see the exercise or if you want to aim for a particular exercise, this is what you have. Delta is the original background mesh to the power of N refinement level and that's all. My advice is do not use refinement level more than four because it's going to give you problems in the boundary layer meshing, okay, because you're going to have aspect ratios too large, but also it's going to start to use more memory, okay? So if you want smaller edges, instead of going here to six or five, try to refine the background mesh. It's, it's better to do it in that, that way. So have this upper limit of refinement level of four, no more than four. So now that you, you do this, the next step, okay, is that let me hide there see that you have your geometry and there are some chart angles all around you have these these edges that you need to resolve okay so to resolve these edges and let me show you you can do that using here there is a filter called filter edges okay and see that you have an angle there you define i put there 30 and see that with 30 degrees is detecting all these edges so basically when you extract that information, you are just forcing a snappy to make the mesh body fitted to this, but also to make it finer if you put a, a value larger than zero. If you put the value zero, it will enforce it to, to, to snap to those edges. And if you put the value larger than zero, we'll add a splitting, okay? So see that you can get that from part of you, okay? So see that we extracted the edges. Now what we can do, now that you have these edges, okay, you can save that data in VTK format. Okay, you can say, okay, save, and let me call it test. And okay, so you save this data in VTK format. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. So see that you have it here, okay, and that is an actual file that it's human readable, okay, so it's something like that. Okay, you need to also, very important, save it in, in binary, okay, so when you, in, in ASCII, sorry, in ASCII format, okay, this is, that is a requirement. So see that you open it, and this is human, human readable information, okay. So you have there, I have it already, I did it there using H1, okay, and that's all, okay. The other way to extract that information is using, so we did it in part of you, but also you can do it here using surface features. Okay, so you have this one. If you open this dictionary, you have it there. So basically you read, you can read multiple STLs, okay? But my geometry is located here. I'm reading something else there, okay? But just to show you, but this is my geometry and you define the, the angle. So this is important. Recall that in, in part of it, we use 30 degrees. Here in this input file, it is the complement. Okay, so it have to be 180 minus 30, 150, okay? Don't know why, so a choice of developers, but this is how you define it, okay, the angle. Later, we're going to see what is that actually, what is measuring that angle. And this option, just leave it as they are default there are many more options. So these are the computer ones. So here you can write that file for inspection. Okay, it will write an OBG file and then you can inspect that file. So to, to use that file, you use surface features and see that it's telling you this reading. And at this point, when you run that, it's going to create this directory where you have the OBG file that you can open in part of you, part of phone. But also in three surface, it's going to create this file image where you have that information available. Okay. So just to show you, Paraphone. Okay, look here. I can open here, constant extrude, and let me open this. See that, that is the information extract. You can open your STL and you will see now, and just to show you, if you go back, let me open my STL here. 
you can apply your filter here which is filter edges and remember is the complement in, in open phone is 150 here you apply 30 and there you go you have it what is neat about doing this in in, in part of it is that you can do selections okay so here you see that you are extracting everything but also you can select a specific segment so see that you have these selection tools here so let's say that I want to select there see that you select this edge and let me go okay here extract selection apply and see that I extracted that selection and now you can save this selection in BTK format. Okay, to save it in BTK format when you select it, you will need to convert it to surface. So this is a step that you have here. Okay, that boom 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 extract surface. Extract surface. Apply. Okay, so you convert it there. save data and then you can save it there so this is when you do selections in in snappy you need to do that additional step so just to show you for instance let me do the selection just here in this region so see that you go extract apply and see that you select that single line and then so you try to save it okay you need to convert it okay you legacy data okay and you save okay so i will call it h2 okay save and ask key and that's it so i have that file h2 there in ascii okay on btk so see that using surface features create this image file this is the file that that i need we need Okay, so it, this image file is also human readable. Okay, so basically you have here vertices coordinate x, y, and z, number of vertices coordinate, and then the connectivity. Okay, vertex six to seven, eight to to six. So it's this list. So actually, you can create this this file by hand. Okay, so if you have the CAD, you can also do it by hand. You can get th those coordinates. So that's why it's very important to get. The geometry so these are the steps so i'm showing you as you the, you these steps but something important see that you have this btk format what we need it in image okay so this btk format remember you get it from part of you so how do we convert this into image so there is a command called surface feature convert you say that i want to convert let's say h2 i want to convert that to image so h2 image so need to put you need to use the right extension with capital m and there you go so now yeah you have the image file okay in this case let me move it there i open this and see that you have your coordinates that now you can use okay so see that this is the first step get those features sometimes you need the features you have any sphere you need features those are hard edges so now that we know how to extract features okay we know th those commands let's move to the next step okay so see that here we read the geometry remember the geometry is always located in this in the constant tree surface directory so let me go here constant tree surface so we'll locate it there then use this method this is a standard and then you give it a name this is an internal name how you are going to call it inside 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 a snappy x -mesh. this is the name how, how you call it to assign refinement and then you can access local region so here i'm showing you how to do it is you want you to do it okay it's okay to do it if you have a single surface but just how to uh, access those local regions this is important that those local regions are actually defined in your stl file so if you open your geometry see here wolf is true see that you have here this keyword solid wolf local 
this is what you are accessing here and then you are giving this name okay so this case doesn't make sense because we have one single surface but you can have multiple surfaces define it not using this this keyword solid and you can access that so as you see you, you have a lot of control so that's what is happening there so let's get reading here this dictionary okay so see that also we're doing all the three steps right ahead okay then we have this we read it we create see that i did some other selection sts i created these entities remember you misspell something here and you get all the options available or you can read the source code so castellated, castellated mesh control okay so here you have these controls you can use these recommended values so this is important that here you are limiting the maximum number of cells in this case we're limiting to 20 million okay so remember 20 million roughly speaking will require something about 20 gigs of memory okay so here you can control now the maximum number of cells in this case we, we are not going to reach 20 million but you control that okay and so here see that here we access the features so remember that we created these features using surface features you access that here and let's access also the edges too the one also that we created manually so you just put it there and what name i gave that file the name edges two so you just put it here and put a large value okay so you put four it's going to take the background cell and it's going to split it four times so you put zero it's going only to enforce okay just to to snap to those edges and as you put a value different from zero it will do split okay so see that is relatively easy you just need to identify edges then surfaces so see that wolf is the local name of the file this one but then also you can access regions so in this case it is the same but later we're going to see some other cases that you have different regions and you can give different refinements so see that now here you give global and local so the local to four minimum and maximum and the second is controlled by curvature and the curvature is controlled here with this angle okay smallest values it means capture more largest it will about it will avoid refinement due to curvature okay but 30 is okay most of the time and that's all this is the auction that most of the time you need to use this is just to show you how to create that and that's all De leave this default default refinement region so remember that we created that box here so here i leave i left the comments so probably it's a little bit confusing but this is the box that we created so now you do the refinement inside this box one one okay location in mesh leave this default values default values default values default values default values okay there is no need to change this or recommended values and here's where you add boundary layer so here you have this option relative sizes so you have you can true everything is is defined in percentage in reference to the background mesh if you put it false everything is defined as an actual distance okay so you put there 0 0.01 it will be 0 0.01 meters here we're t telling that is percent of so like 50 percent of whatever you have in the background mesh so I, as a beginner i think this is very good this action is fine so use it i recommend it to use re relative size true expansion ratio we looked at, 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 at the introduction of meshing okay so this is the growth rate final layer thickness so i want the final layer of the boundary layer to be 50 percent okay the height or the largest dimension of the cell next to the surface okay but this is the cell next to the surface after refinement it's not the background so just to make it clear it's not the background you define a minimum thickness everything is, is, is relative and then you choose the surface where you want to apply so see that it's wall wall because i access that i created that here if you don't create this patch here it will be wolf. OK, 
okay, will be the same. But if you ask, access that one, you give it, you give the name. So it might be a little bit confusing. I try to over, as I say, sometimes I overcomplicate things. Then here, all these options, leave it as default. Everything has default, don't change anything. Here we'll read the mesh quality controls also, use default values, okay? And that's it. And here you enable that diagnostic information for the boundary layer. The least one, you comment this one because I don't want to, to save all those files, just this is for the animation or debugging. So if you want, you can play with the suctions later. And that's it. So look at that. Now if I type snappy X mesh, okay, da, 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 da. three surface, so let's see that is telling you that it's not finding that file my case so da, 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 da. okay is I name it I need to change the name is anxious okay well you can change okay let me change the it's not the X mesh okay let me change the dictionary so will be be bam 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 somewhere here. Okay, it's H two. Okay, snappy X machine. Off we go. So it's good. always also I didn't save the log file, but also save the log file now because if you have problems with the snappy X machine. I will ask you, show me the log, log mesh. But as you see here, what it's doing is a lot of iterations. It's always controlling the mesh quality, trying to enforce that. So it's important that here, do not use values super conservative because otherwise it, it will take a lot of time. Okay, also there is no warranty that it's it's going to reach this value of orthogonality, skewedness. Okay, we saw also in the introduction what are these values. Okay, so do not put here stuff like 45 because it will take too long and not necessarily will respect that. But these values are okay. So see that it's doing all this iteration. So it will do castellation, snapping, and then boundary layer. And see that at the end, boundary layer, and it's giving you some diagnostic information. So as you look at your di directory, you see that you have folder one, two, and three, Castellation, body fitted mesh, boundary layer. Why you have times one, two, and three? So just to show you, because in control D, I have my delta T ones. Your delta T is 0 0.01 will be 0 0.01, two, three, okay? So be careful. So now let's visualize this platform, okay? And let me first, I want to see only my surface. Okay, I want to see just the surface. Okay, that's show me here. So see, first step, Castellation. Second, Snap, and this serves that you don't see anything, but it's the boundary layer. Okay, so you have your steps there. So now let me select internal mesh, or I think I already have an state there. When you see part of you there, there is an state file that you can. So here, just go this, select that file and that file and see that this is what we have. Okay, so this is a cock plane, and let me go and show you here. Okay, castellation, body fitted mesh, and now boundary layer. It is just pushing away, see, your mesh, and it's adding this one. And important, remember that that 0 0.5 is 50% in relation to this cell, next to the surface. It is not next to the starting one. Okay, so as you see here, see that this corresponds to roughly speaking 50%, okay? So that's what it's doing, okay? 
So see that it would change in size because you have different sizes there. But this is it, okay? It's a pretty good mesh. This is just to create a region there that you can add a source there. So, or just put it into motion. So most of the time you, you need to do that. So this is how, how it works, okay? So it's relatively easy. Don't get lost in all those options, okay? So let me go, for instance, okay, let me raise this one. And for instance, let me change this and let me put everything to 4-4, four, four. okay? But actually, before doing this, okay, let me go here. So see that we created here one, two, and three. So for instance, let's say that I'm not happy with the boundary layer. Okay, we added three layers. I can go like this, erase that, and restart because I'm happy with these two steps. Okay, they work fine. So see that, fall false and restart and only add the boundary layer. So now, the dictionary is going only to read the auction related to this. So we had a uh, tree. So now let's say that, let's put now eight. Okay, important. Before doing this also, you have to be sure that here you need to la enable latest time. Okay, it needs to start from the latest time and control this. So as you go now, it's not PX mesh. See that it's starting from two and it's only adding the boundary layer, okay? So it's, this is very helpful. I recommend you to work in this way, no? Do not use the auction override. It will automatically save everything in the directory constant. So you, are, you don't have the option to redo the boundary layer, okay? So see that now uh, we change it. Okay, let's open. Let me load this state. So select the open phone file in your computer. Okay. And see that now you have there your eight layers. Okay. Very helpful. Again, if you don't like it, erase that. And that's all. Or for instance, I don't like a step two. There were there, there, there were problems there. You go here, there F, raise two, and then you just go here. Okay, and you can say you can put it through true, so it will start to do it from there, or you can put just through this one and it will do just the snapping. Okay, so if you relaunch, whoops. It will go into, it is going to do only the snapping. Then you check, you are satisfied with the snapping, go and move to the next step, okay? Which is the boundary layer, or probably you need the boundary layer, okay? So you are done, okay? So it's going to do everything. So see that here is just iterating, iterating, just to snap the body to the STL. So if you are happy with that, then you can go like this, true, true, and then launch. See that you have time to launch, and you are going to add only the boundary layer that probably sounding eight layers, I think. Okay. Okay, and there you go. You have your three steps. So as you proceed in this way, you're going to have your final solution in folder three, your final mesh. But remember that the mesh is always located in constant. So what you need to do is transfer this into this directory, okay? So you can do like this, you can do it. Let me show you how to do it now using the file explorer. So basically just erase this file, you don't need it anymore and copy this directory and put it there. And that's all. You can also do it from the terminal. No? So you get the idea. So three, okay. You erase everything, check mesh. Always run check mesh. 
and see that you have fear. See that it's telling you that you have no orthogonality problems, okay, but it's not a big deal, okay, 70 is still okay. And Parafone. Apply. Okay, and there you go. You have your mesh. Let me put this cut one, cut one. And that's it, okay? So as you see, very straightforward. And the final step will be, always remember, you can open this file and you can change these names manually and the type manually also, okay? So you can go here. I don't like this one. I like to call it inlet, whatever. It's up to you, okay? So let's repeat this step. So I show you how to create, we explore the files, and just to show you the difference, is you use a snappy X mesh, it's going to create the folders known sequential. No step one, step two, step three. But if you use the auction override, okay? So let me go block mesh. Surface features. Okay, you need to do it once, but it's just and it's not be override. Okay, so just I forgot here that I need to change this dictionary here. Okay, next to be true and true. Okay. So it go, it's going to start and it's going to put the, solu the, the, the solution automatically in the folder constant poly mesh. Okay. So you need to do the transfer of the solution. So let's wait a little bit. It shouldn't take that long. So first it does the castellation. So this is important to remember that the castellation step is where all refinement is done in function to the in relation to the background mesh. All refinement is done here. The other step is just, this is just doing the snapping to get the body fitted. And this is just putting that inflation layer close to the to the surface, but there is no refinement of the previous mesh. It's just putting new cells, okay? So here is where you need to be sure that you get the right curvature, the right number of cells and everything. So it can be in edges, surfaces and regions and everything you control it here. Okay, just read your STL and you can control here features, then refine surfaces and regions. Okay, so you have everything there. So I see that it's done here and see that you don't have 013, you already have everything. <coughs> you already have everything in constant. You have all the mesh and everything. And again, just open this one and you can modify that 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 file, okay? So at this point, just to end this case and then we move to other case, here also you have, you can run in parallel. So you have these two scripts. Run mesh is serial, okay? The steps and you can choose also dictionaries. So you see that you have different dictionaries, okay? And in parallel, it's like this, okay? You just de de decompose in the standard way as we previously, previously studied, and you can run checkmates like this. And also remember that you need to reconstruct the mesh, so you use this command, reconstruct par mesh, okay? This is the mesh, not the solution. Okay, so that's all for this case, okay? I hope you didn't get confused at a higher level. In any case, we have Three more cases, easy cases that we're going to understand better all these options. So thank you for your attention. See you in the next video. Bye.